Mile Island ahead of schedule. Constellation Energy now says it'll restart Unit 1 of the infamous nuclear plant in 2027, a year early, thanks to a boost from a grid operator and a power deal with Microsoft. The world's hunger for computing power, especially for artificial intelligence, is so immense that it is bringing back a ghost from America's nuclear past. Three Mile Island, Unit 1, a nuclear reactor that went quiet in 2019, is now set to roar back to life by 2028. This is a massive engineering undertaking designed to pump 800 megawatts of carbon-free electricity into the grid. To put that in perspective, 800 megawatts is enough to power approximately 320,000 to 720,000 homes for a year, or several large AI data centers, which can each demand over 100 megawatts. It's like powering a small city just for computers. Tech giant Microsoft is buying all this power for its data centers. The company making this happen Constellation Energy is investing over 1.6 billion euros in the plant's revival. How could a place once known for disaster become a beacon for our high-tech future? To understand this surprising turn, we must first look back to a dark day in nuclear history. On March 28, 1979, at 4 a.m., a series of mechanical failures and human errors led to a partial meltdown in Unit 2 of the Three Mile Island plant. It began when a cooling pump failed, causing pressure to rise inside the reactor system. A safety relief valve opened to reduce this pressure, as it was supposed to, but then it got stuck open, leaking vital cooling water away. Operators, confused by faulty instruments and incomplete training, mistakenly reduced the flow of energy cooling water, making the problem worse. This caused the reactor core, filled with uranium fuel rods, to overheat. About 50% of the core melted, with around 20 tons of uranium finding its way to the bottom of the reactor vessel. While some radioactive gas was released, it was a very small amount and thankfully, no injuries or deaths were reported. The massive containment building, a thick concrete and steel structure about 45 meters wide, like the width of a soccer field and 76 meters tall, similar to a very large office building, did its job, keeping most of the radioactive material inside. The accident caused sweeping changes across the nuclear industry in America. Stricter regulations were immediately put in place by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Operator training was completely revamped, focusing on understanding the actual plant conditions, not just what the instruments seem to say. Now, how do you bring a giant, complex machine, quiet for years, back to life? Unit 1 is a pressurized water reactor, or PWR, Think of it like a giant, super-efficient kettle that never boils its own water. Inside the reactor vessel, which is a thick steel cylinder about 12 meters tall, like a large school bus standing on end and 4 meters wide, similar to the length of a small car, tiny uranium fuel pellets are stacked inside metal tubes called fuel rods. Hundreds of these rods are bundled together to form fuel assemblies, making up the reactor core. When a tiny particle, called a neutron, hits a uranium atom, it splits, releasing heat and more neutrons. This is called fission, and it is a carefully controlled chain reaction. Water, kept under very high pressure to stop it from boiling, flows around these hot fuel rods. This water gets super hot, reaching around 300 degrees Celsius, which is much hotter than a pizza oven. This super hot, pressurized water then goes to a large heat exchanger called a steam generator. A steam generator can be about 21 meters tall, like a seven-story building. Inside the steam generator, the hot, pressurized water from the reactor heats a separate loop of water, turning it into steam. This steam then spins a giant turbine, which is connected to a generator that makes electricity. The cooled water from the reactor goes back to be reheated, and the steam is turned back into water to be used again. It is a closed loop, 
very efficient and designed to keep the radioactive materials safely contained. Bringing a mothballed plant like Unit 1 back online is not like flipping a light switch. It is a massive engineering puzzle that requires immense effort and expertise. Since the plant was shut down, many of the regular safety checks and maintenance programs were stopped. Now, regulators need to approve restoring its operating license, which means making sure everything that was built to last 40 years can now safely operate for 60 or even 80 years. This involves thorough inspections to confirm the durability and life extension of every part. Every single component needs to be checked, from the smallest valve to the largest pump, and many might need to be replaced or refurbished. A major challenge involves the steam generators. Unit 1 is a Babcock & Wilcox design, which typically uses two large steam generators. These are enormous, each weighing around 330 to 440 tons, which is like the weight of a small cargo ship. If one needs replacing, it is a huge job sometimes even requiring engineers to cut a massive hole in the containment building itself just to get the old one out and a new one in. The plant's control systems, which are like the brain of the entire operation, also need modern upgrades. Old analog systems might be replaced with digital ones, requiring new wiring and complex software integration. Of course, the reactor core will receive new uranium fuel rods, the very heart of the power generation. Safety and regulatory hurdles are a major part of this restart. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, has a strict and detailed approval process. They need to approve restoring the plant's operating status and ensure all components are safe for operation. This involves detailed inspections, verifying that all repairs meet strict safety standards and checking for potential issues like cracks in steam generator tubes. They also need to make sure the emergency plans are still top-notch and that operators are highly trained on the updated systems and procedures. The entire process includes getting approval for a licensing bundle to officially change the plant's status from decommissioned to operational. Beyond the plant itself, even the surrounding infrastructure needs attention. Since the plant is on an island, the bridge leading to it might need to be checked and reinforced to handle the weight of new, heavy equipment being transported. Also, the electrical grid connections need to be ready to reliably receive and distribute the new power. The sheer physical scale of the components, like steam generators as tall as a seven-story building, and the meticulous regulatory requirements demonstrate the immense engineering challenge of this reactivation. So, why go through all this effort? The answer lies in our rapidly evolving technological world. AI data centers are incredibly hungry for power. A single large AI data center can demand over 100 megawatts, consuming as much electricity as 100,000 homes. Training advanced AI models like GPT-4 needed around 30 megawatts of power and future AI initiatives are looking at multi-gigawatt data centers, which is thousands of megawatts. These centers need power 24 hours a day, every day, without interruption. Nuclear energy is unique because it can provide this constant, always-on power without releasing carbon pollution, unlike burning fossil fuels. Wind and solar are clean, but they depend on the weather, meaning they cannot provide power all the time. This immense and continuous power need from AI cannot be reliably met by intermittent renewable sources alone, creating a critical demand for steady, carbon-free energy. This situation suggests a fundamental shift in energy strategy, driven by the unprecedented demands of emerging technologies like AI, where nuclear power is seen as an essential component for a high-tech, decarbonized future. This restart is not just about electricity, it is also a huge economic boost for the region. Constellation Energy is investing 1.6 billion euros into the plant. The project is expected to create 3,400 direct and indirect jobs, bringing new life to the local area. It is also projected to add a massive 16 billion euros to Pennsylvania's economy, 
generating billions in state and federal taxes. Despite its many benefits, nuclear power faces a big challenge, radioactive waste. After the uranium fuel is used, it is still radioactive and needs to be stored safely for thousands of years. Currently, America does not have a permanent place to store all this waste. It is kept at the power plants themselves, in special containers, often in large concrete and steel structures. The waste is processed to make it safer for long-term storage, sometimes turned into a glass-like solid or put into cement. These containers are then stored, often for decades, to allow some of the radioactivity to fade. This issue remains a point of criticism for environmental groups who highlight the unresolved long-term environmental responsibility that comes with nuclear energy. The restart of Three Mile Island Unit 1 is more than just an old power plant coming back online. It is a bold engineering statement, a direct response to the massive energy needs of our AI-driven future and a testament to how far nuclear safety has come since 1979. What do you think about this historic restart? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this journey fascinating, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the world of engineering and technology, and turn on notifications so you do not miss our next video.